Hello, everybody, and welcome to our show tonight. Um, I'm Kath Armstrong from the Chief Cates Club, and the hand you may or may not see over here on my left is my daughter Hannah. Hannah is going to act as our moderator tonight, so she'll be checking your comments and keeping track of them for me. If you'd like to join the live chat, you need to be logged into your Gmail or YouTube account. It's a YouTube thing. It's not a cat thing. I'm not being difficult to get on with. That's YouTube. It's not one of my crazy ideas, folks. If you don't have a YouTube channel account or Gmail account, you can leave your comments in the section below underneath where it says um, show more. Now, tonight, if you have a question, could you please put it in capital letters, all uppercase, so that it stands out in the chat? Those comments fly by really, really quickly, and so it's hard. I don't see them at all. I can't keep up with them at all, but it's really hard for Hannah to keep track of them too, and they can get lost if they don't stand out. And then you think, I'm not answering your questions. I just haven't seen it. I'll do my best to answer your questions towards the end of the show. So I won't stop necessarily in the middle of the program. If you were looking for us last week, I do apologise. I did post that there wouldn't be a show and we sent out an email notification, I think. So if you're on the newsletter list, you hopefully will have received the newsletter and will have known that I wasn't able to do the show. If you didn't get an email, then you're not on the newsletter list. And that means you don't get my newsletters, not just um, email notifications about our show. If you'd like to get the email notifications and perhaps like to get my newsletter, it goes out every Thursday morning at 11 a.m., then hop over to the Chief Skates Club website and just subscribe. It's free. What you've got to do is enter your first name and your email address. I've put the link underneath me here in my notes. Now, just a little hint, be sure to confirm your subscription so we can send you the newsletters and emails. If you don't confirm, we can't send you anything. And, again, that's not a casting. That is required by law. So look for the link underneath me there. Now, we're getting closer to Christmas. So this is going to be the first of a series of shows I'll be doing on hampers. Hampers make great gifts. Okay, let me clarify. Good hampers with a lot of thought put into them, not the standard two jars of mini jam, stale tea and erky biscuits type hamper or the super smelly bath gel that gives you a rash and body lotion that makes everything stick to you type hamper. Good hampers. These are hampers that are customised to suit the recipient. They're put together with things that you know that person will love or that they need or they really, really want. They're great hampers. But they don't need to cost a bomb. They don't need to blow your gift budget. I've been giving hampers for years now and they're requested every year. It started quite by accident. It wasn't something I had planned to do. But one Christmas, we suddenly had two extra guests for Christmas dinner. Now, it's a tradition in our family to open the presents around the Christmas tree when everyone has gathered before lunch. So as people come in, put their gifts under the tree, and then when everyone's here, we'll gather around the tree and open the presents. I think mum started this tradition so that the Littleys would have something to do and keep them out of the kitchen while she was finishing up the Christmas dinner, but it doesn't really matter. It's just what we do. So I had gifts for everyone except for two extras. Now, I didn't know them very well back then, so I wasn't really sure what to do. Not only that, but I'd spent my present budget. It was gone. So I looked around at what I had 
I had raspberry jam, I had orange marmalade, I had zucchini pickles, I had tomato relish, I had mini fruit cakes, I had little mini puddings, I had some shortbread, um, some homemade mustard, some moo mustard, I had royal puddings, I had Robert Tim's coffee bags. We use them when they're camping as a when we're camping as a treat, and so I buy them when they're on a half price. I had fancy tea bags. Now they were a gift to me. I have no issue with regifting folks, so I'll talk more about that later. I had bottles of lemon cordial and of overnight ginger beer in the fridge. Ah, <sighs> so I was feeling a bit more confident. That was more than enough to put together a decent hamper. And so that's what I did. And that's what it became. I found a box. I covered it with Christmas paper. You've just got to love to be able to use all that 10 cent wrapping paper that you buy on Boxing Day. Covering boxes, perfect for it. And it looked really, really good. Now, this is a really, oh, I decorated it with a bow. This is a really quick and easy bow um, that I make out of strips of wrapping paper. Um, where is it? I've got one here to show you. It's really simple. So simple, just a little, it's not even a bow, it's a, I don't know what they're called. That's a little one. See, giggles. Really easy to make. Now, they're just strips of wrapping paper, about a centimetre wide. I've got some here for you because I know someone will want to see me make it and want to see how it's done. Now, what I've done, because this isn't double-sided paper, I've made the stack and put like sides together, okay? Folded it in half, put a staple in the centre to hold it together. Easy. Then all you do, remember curling ribbon? This is what we're making. On the wrong side of the paper, you run your scissor up and then turn it over. Now always run your scissor on the wrong side of the paper and you'll always have the pretty side, if it's not double-sided paper, the pretty side on the outside. See that? It's so easy. Now, these strips are about maybe 25 centimetres long. Um, I didn't really measure them. I just cut off a, a piece of wrapping paper and um, cut it into strips. So about a centimetre, you can make them narrower if you want to. You can make them a bit wider if you want to. You don't need to use wrapping paper. You can use um, chip packets. The silver foil on the inside of potato chip packets, crisp packets, looks amazing when you do it like this. Let's see. You see how they're all curling up? It's really simple, easy way to decorate. And then you just, that's only one side. It's the other side to do. Now you can leave it like that if you want to. Or you can do the other side, stick it on top. It's just a really simple bow that costs nothing, nothing to make. You're going to use the ends of your wrapping paper and whatever. So they're really, really easy to do. Little things like that make your... Gift hamper, personal, and it saves you money. It's a really simple thing to do. If you've got older kids, they can do it too. So you don't need a step-by-step -step video. That's, you know, that's how you do it. Cut your strips about a centimetre wide, fold them in half, staple them, then curl them. Can't get any easier than that. So I did all that sort of thing. To wrap the whole thing together, I found some cellophane, um, some cellophane bags, put the royal puddings and a couple of mini fruit cakes in the cellophane bag, tied them with um, curling ribbon. I took my um, scribbled labels off the jars of jam and mustard and pickles because I just scribble, you know, raspberry, January 20 or whatever, printed off some new labels in a pretty fancy font and stuck them on. And they all went into the box. Only issue was the box was a little tall. So problem solved, make some shreds. Now I took a roll of that 10 cent wrapping paper, um, 
used my kitchen shears and while it was on the roll, I measured just eyeballed about two centimetres and cut through. So it was about two centimetres wide and I had all these cylinders. Then I cut each cylinder in half, snip, spread them out, scrunch them up and put those in the bottom of the box like shreds. It was Christmas wrapping paper, so it was still in the theme. You shush them out and rearrange them and make them all pretty. And it was just enough to hold up the jars and bags and things so that the hamper looks luxuriant and, and very, very um, full. The hardest part for me is arranging them to look nice. What I see in my imagination doesn't always translate to the actual thing. But once I was happy with that, out came the cellophane roll. Now, I buy cellophane on rolls. I used to be able to get it at the reject shop. Don't know if you still can, but it's really handy. Measured it out, wrapped it up, scrunched up the corners, tied it you know, together with a curling ribbon and topped it off with a big bow made from wrapping paper. That was the hamper. It took me probably half an hour to put together. Um, really simple and easy to do. Best of all, didn't actually, I didn't have to buy anything. I didn't have to go out of my way to do it. So that was my hamper. Handed it over and it was loved. It was an absolute hit. Everything in it was enjoyed by the recipients. Thank goodness. And then what happened was, getting towards next Christmas, I got a message by my brother to see if I was doing the hampers again, and if so, could they please have a hamper for Christmas? Well, that was a gift-giving problem solved. Yes, hamper, off the list, perfect. Now I do them every year. I try to mix them up a little bit. I take out something that's been in for a few years and replace it with something that's new. So this year I'm adding a jar of caramelised onions and a packet of cheesy pastry twists and they're so simple to do. Now I've already made the onions. Um, they're in jars, already put away with pretty labels on them. The pastry twists I'll do just before I'm ready to give the hampers just so they stay fresh. Now I worked out and all these hampers cost under $10 to put together. That's not a lot of money and it's within my, gut, uh, my gift budget. Now, I know if you were going to buy them, they'd be anything from $30 upwards. Last time I priced a similar sized gourmet style hamper that actually had a few things less than mine. It was, are you sitting down? Yes, I hope you are, $89. $89, folks. And it was just in a box. It wasn't even in a basket or something you could reuse. So I'm pretty sure that some of the things in that hamper would have been tossed. So hampers don't need to cost a bomb to be great. If you put a little thought into them and customise them, then you know, they might become a perpetual gift for you too. And frankly, for some gifts, being able to put together the same thing year after year, and know that it is what is wanted, that it's appreciated, that the person loves it, just makes life so much easier. I figure if that's what they want and I can do it, why shouldn't I? Why do I need to stress over a gift when I have the perfect solution? Then everyone's happy. Works for me. But hampers don't need to be just food. For years now, I've been giving cheapskate-style cleaning hampers as gifts, not just for Christmas. They do make a rather good Christmas present, I think. But for housewarmings, for moving out of home, for young people who are moving out of home for the first time, engagement gifts. I've even given a couple of wedding gifts. And birthday presents for the more practical people I know. And they're always well-received. And they're easy to put together too. I either recycle a box or basket I have or I get a $2 crate from the reject shop or the $2 shop or a bucket 
And into that, I put one quantity of Cheapskate's washing powder. It's usually in a container with a little scoop. Then I print um, the washing powder tip sheet. I print out the um, washing powder recipe sheet. I also include a bottle of a spray bottle with Miracle Spray and a Miracle Spray tip sheet and recipe sheet. Then, just to make it a little better, I print out cleaning with the Super 6 and staple it into book format. If you have a laminator, we, we do, we'll laminate the tip sheets and punch holes in them, put a ribbon in them, and then they can be hung in the laundry so the recipe is never lost. To round out the hamper, I put in one of my knitted dishcloths. Put it on the bucket or the box or whatever, bunch it up in cellophane and tie it up with a bow. Now, if you get flowers, keep the cellophane and the papers from your flowers. They are really good for um, wrapping hampers and the bows can be recycled, the twine, all those sorts of things. You can choose um, containers to complement or match the colour scheme of the recipient's laundry or kitchen. Um, and it just makes it more of a wow, a wow gift. Last time I put one together, the total cost was about $6.80. It's pretty. It's useful. Under under gift budget. And it looks great. If you have a knitter or a crochet on your gift list, make up a knitting or crochet um, go bag. Now, these are really good fun because for these, I use a toiletry bag, the bigger ones. You know, not the little ones, but the bigger ones. They're probably about 30 centimetres long, yay high with a handle, that sort of thing, because they are cheaper than knitting bags. And you'll often find them in the op shop or garage sales, if you can do garage sales, brand new for around a dollar. Now, if you look for the larger bag style, you'll be able to fit knitting needles in it. It needs to be about 30 centimetres wide. Then, while you're at the op shop, Look for vintage knitting needles or crochet hooks. They're probably 25, 50 cents a pair. That's about what I pay for them. And you can get them in colours, you know. They used to come in red and green and vivid blue. Or if you find the um, beautiful old tortoise shell or wooden knitting needles, they're gems. They're absolute gems. And they are beautiful to use and lovely to give have a knit up or a crochet out, they will really appreciate those. But look for them, garage sales, op shops, flea markets, trash and treasures if you can get to them, school fates if they have white elephants, all sorts of things. Because if you have to buy those things new, they're jolly expensive and they're not vintage. They don't have that beautiful vintage used story behind this type of feel to them. Now, just a hint, check them over to make sure they're smooth, um, they're in a good condition, there's no nicks or rough spots on them that will catch the yarn, and they're clean. Now, they will clean up really, really well. If you bring them home, they'll come up like brand new after a soak in some hot water with some Miracle Spray in it. I just um, fill my kitchen sink, half fill it, half fill it, Miracle spray, hot water, put the knitting needles and crochet hooks in and let them soak. Give them a wipe over with a sponge or a cloth after a little while and dry them. The other thing that you can add to your knitting or crochet hamper is an old-fashioned tape measure. Now, if you can find one of the little retractable ones, do you remember those? They were probably a couple of inches square and they came out of a very skinny little, probably half an inch wide, they're beautiful. They would be really cute if you can find one of those. And a couple of vintage knitting or crochet patterns to toss in. The other thing I like to put in that is probably going to sound a bit weird to you, but yarn, but nothing weird about that, but some vintage yarn. So look for 
you can find whole balls, new balls, or half balls of wool or cotton. In older, um, the older brands, if you can find some of those and put it into your knitting hamper with your vintage tape and your vintage patterns and your vintage knitting needles, you know, the only thing then you need to finish it off is a pair of stalk scissors. You know, sometimes they can, they're a bit harder to find used. Most people hang on to their stalk scissors, good stalk scissors, or just a pair of um, small scissors that you can get from Kmart or a $2 shop if you can find them at a reasonable price. Um, just the thing with the yarn, bring, um, jumping around a bit here, but with the yarn, it will depend on who you're giving it to, but filling the bag with some op shop yarn, the older balls, the half used balls of wool or cotton, it is really nice to complete the vintage feel of the hamper. But again, it depends on whether or not the recipient would appreciate the genuine vintageness of the gift rather than the uh, genuine imitation fake brand new vintage style feel. Not everyone appreciates true vintage. But you'll know best what to do. Oh, if you have a sewer on your present list, make a button hamper. Get a few cute jars, ask around, look, see what you've got, look for them in op shops and so on. I never pay more than 50 cents for a jar and start collecting buttons. You can sort them by colour into jars. Um, then you can have a jar where you add some cotton reels in basic cotton colours, black, white, navy, green, green, pink, red, yellow, whatever, to match the buttons. Um, and add a packet of sewing needles and a thimble and it's done. Now, if you really wanted to jazz that up, you can use three jars of a similar size. They don't have to be the exact size. Um, glue them together in a triangle to make a sort of caddy and then fill them with buttons, label the jars, and you have a really nice gift. It's easy to do. Um, don't forget to put the needles and a thimble in if you do that. It shouldn't cost more than $10, especially if you source all your supplies from op shops and garage sales or trash and treasure markets or whatever. These are all things that um, we can be looking for through the year. I know you've heard me say I start my Christmas shopping on Boxing Day um, birthdays, anniversaries, if I know we've got a baby coming in the family or, or um, a wedding or maybe an engagement coming up, I start looking for gifts on Boxing Day for the next year. You buy them when you can find them. So if I'm looking for hamper things, I start. Every time I go out, I have my list in my bag and if I see something, I check the list to make sure I haven't already got it or if it's what I need so that it's not a mad rush at the end of the year. Not everyone likes to shop like that, but it takes so much stress off and it really means that you can stay under your gift budget. And under budget is always a good thing. Now, don't dismiss garage sales for the things for your hamper. Love them. You love garage sales, do you, John? Yep. So do I. You might not be able to find everything you want at the one garage sale or, or even one off shop, but keep on shopping. Keep looking and it will come together. The garage sales are a treasure trove for new things. People get things given to them and they take it and say, thank you, that's a lovely gift, put it in the cupboard, it sits there for five years, then they have a garage sale and sell it off for a dollar or two dollars or 50 cents. Bargain, bargain, folks. Brand new things in the box, unopened. Bargain, always. Don't dismiss those types of deals. You know, and 
for anything. Um, I was talking to Wendy on Sunday, Sunday, yeah, and we were just, I don't know how it came up about kids' toys and things. And I said, Hannah didn't have a baby born doll. She had a newborn baby doll, which was the knockoff baby born. Identical, we couldn't tell the difference, but, you know, third price. But she did have genuine baby born cot and the little nappy bag and folding um, table thing and all those sorts of things because I got them at a garage sale. And I think I got the whole lot for about $4. She loved that doll. We've still got it packed away somewhere. Don't knock just because it's at a garage sale. Don't think that it's going to be rough and ready or cheap and nasty or well used or something. It won't, not necessarily, you know, it could be really good. So think about those things. And when you do, you've got the tools to tailor hamper to suit just about anyone. And that's perfect for if you have someone who has everything. We all have at least one of those hard to buy for people on the gift list. Personalising a hamper to suit their needs, their wants, their hobbies or their lifestyle. It means you give a gift that works. One year for my mother, who always said she didn't want presents because she didn't need anything, she didn't keep our money, blah, 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 blah. We made up a meat hamper. I went to the butcher and I bought her favourite cuts of meat and then I brought them home and I portioned them into single single person portions and I back sealed them and because she was on her own, so only single serves. And I froze them for her. Then when we went to take them to her, we put them in an esky with a big bow on top and gave it to her. And she loved it. It ticked all the boxes. She loved it. It meant her freezer was filled with meat she enjoyed. She was really happy with that. It was all in single serve, so there was no waste. She wasn't eating the same thing for, you know, a week. It wasn't something that was going to clutter up her house and it was something that she could use. Now, I'll fess up and say it did cost more than $10. I used up all the allocated gift budget for mum's gift for that present, but it was fun to do. I absolutely loved going to the butcher and looking for the things for her and packing them in single serves because, seriously, when you've got a family of five, single serving is just something that I haven't imagined for so many years. It was so much fun to do single serves. I think I got as much pleasure out of doing that for her as she did, and it was a gift that made her happy for months. She ended up with about six months' worth of meat for her in her freezer. It was great. So if you're thinking of hampers, anyone on your gift list this year, Start thinking about the type of hamper you're going to give them. What do they like? What do they use? What do they like that they won't get for themselves for whatever reason? Mum really enjoyed steak every now and then, but she always felt they were too big or too expensive. We bought a steak. What do you have that you can add to the hamper? What do you make that you can add to the hamper? I make tomato relish, jams, pickles, mustards, those sorts of things. Do you want it to be fun, Um, movie hamper, spa, breakfast in a box, or a useful hamper, laundry, cleaning, gardening, car wash, so on? Then think about how you're going to present it. Do you have a box or a bath that you can use, or will you need to find one? Or can it go in a jar? Or a bucket, perhaps a bag, even a small suitcase can be used to present a, a hand pump. You, know, you can get little wheelie cases from $2 type shops for around $5. Those little tiny carry on size suitcases for about $5. I should have put this first, but what's your gift budget? Can you make the hamper to fit your gift budget? 
Because remember, it can cost less. It just can't cost more. We all need to stay on budget and we all need to ignore the emotion of Christmas. <laughs> pulls your heartstrings, I know, it pulls at mine. And gift giving and stick to the budget. Now, there are six and a half weeks till Christmas. Christmas is Friday this year, 25th of December. We've got about six and a half weeks till Christmas. Plenty of time to create some stunning personalised hampers that you can give to everyone on your gift list. And I mean everyone, even babies and, and toddlers and teenagers and all the ages in between. You can create hampers for them. You know, hampers are great for kids. All the, all the little items, the individual items, make up one big present. But remember, to a young mind, more is better. The more they have to open, the better it is. So you have time to think, plan, and now even Melburnians can get to the shops and op shops to start gathering the supplies to make beautiful budget and the hampers. There's no excuse if you've got hampers on your list not to be able to do it. So get your gift, gift list. Think about the theme or the style of each hamper and shop at home first. Look around, see what you've already got that you can add to it. See what you've made that you can add to it, what you are going to make that you can add to it. There's no point in spending money to buy something that you already have. That's just a waste. So take the time to shop at home first. Then begin to put your hampers together. Now, I lucked out that the first year with my no no, I just toss everything I had in hamper and they've become a tradition. Now I think about them for ages before I start to put them together and I try to mix them up a bit every year. And, but I think every year they just get better without costing any more. They still don't cost a lot. And that's, that's the secret, though. Hampers are good for your gift budget, really good for your gift budget because they can look spectacular without costing a bomb. They don't need to cost a small fortune. Now, I have some really good ideas for hampers. Um, ice cream sundae hamper. Everybody likes ice cream. So you can make this hamper as extravagant as you like. Oh, oh I've lost them. I didn't bring them over. But you can start, start with a box or a basket. I was looking for the sprinkles for us. That's my invention. Never mind. Well, it was a hint. Sorry, folks. Um, that was a box of, um, a basket. You can add some ice cream cones. They can be plain cones or waffle cones if you want to be a bit more extravagant. Or waffle bowls. Waffle bowls. Thank you, darling. Thank you, darling. Or waffle bowls. Yes. Then you can add some toppings, some sprinkles, some chopped nut. Hundreds and thousands, whatever you like. Um, I came across these sprinkles today and these hundreds and thousands in Aldi, of all places. And these are in Christmas colours. How cute are they? $3.45 a container? Yeah. So not overly extravagant. You don't have to put the whole one in each hamper. It's in smaller jars and portion them out. But they were really cute and they're fun. I thought they were fun. I can't wait to do some Christmas baking and use them. But anyway, um, you can make some chocolate sauce or some caramel sauce. The recipes for those are in our Chief Cakes Club recipe file. Really easy to make. You can buy a bottle of topping if you want to. Um, an ice cream scoop. Kmart had some really cute ice cream scoops and around $2. You can find Sunday dishes. I know sometimes in the supermarket you'll see them hanging, you know, in the middle of something totally irrelevant. They'll be in with the frozen food or something hanging and they'll be plastic Sunday dishes. Look for op shops or whatever. 
or you might like to haunt op shops, secondhand shops for glass Sunday dishes and put those in and some long-handled Sunday spoons and then a packet of serviettes and you've got a Sunday hamper, an ice cream Sunday hamper. So much fun. And if it's, that could be a family gift. If there's a family of kids, kids love ice cream. You can perhaps put in, um, if you really wanted to, a gift card so they could go and buy some ice cream to go with it. One that I know I really like is gourmet coffee and tea. Now, I'm a bit fussy about my coffee. You all know that. And I'm fussy about my tea. Yes, I know. I'm just hard to get on with. But you can do um, beautiful coffee and tea hampers and they don't have to cost a small fortune. Like I said, I, you could do it all bags, have a theme, and it's all tea bags or all coffee bags of different flavours. When they're on half price sale, they're under five dollars. Then, to make it really unique, make some chocolate spoons. Chocolate spoons in your coffee, yum! Oh, not with the tea. Oh, not with the tea. No, you don't put chocolate spoons in your tea, but in your coffee, you can put chocolate spoons. Again, the instructions are on the Cheapskates Club website, but it's pretty much get some plastic spoons. Melt some chocolate, dip the bowl of the spoon, just the bowl of the spoon into the chocolate, let it drip off, let it set till it's hard, tie them in a cellophane bag. I do them in sets of six. They're really cute and they're great. Or you could do the same thing for hot chocolate. Put some hot chocolate drink mix in, some marshmallows and some chocolate spoons. A couple of nice tumblers or mugs. There you go. Iced coffee, hand pump. Same deal. Um, Chocolate spoons, a couple of tall glasses, a bottle of Joy's iced coffee syrup. The recipe is on our website. Absolutely delicious. I was drinking some this afternoon. Um, and some chocolate coated coffee beans. A bag of a small bag of coffee beans doesn't cost much, about three or four dollars maybe. Melt some chocolate. Now I'm a bit fussy about my chocolate too. Oops, I am pernickety, aren't I? Anyway, a bit fussy about the chocolate. Cadbury Dairy Milk, just melt it. Gently melt it over hot water so it doesn't, doesn't burn and separate. Stir through your coffee beans. Spread them in a single layer on some baking paper. Put them in the freezer to set and then snap them apart. They are really good, really nice to just munch on. But they're really nice. They're just great. And they go well with your iced coffee hamper. Um, homemade toffee caramel fudge. You can do a hamper with different bags of those. It could be um, five-minute fudge, white chocolate fudge. You could do stained glass fudge, all sorts of coconut ice, whatever you like, and put a whole assortment together in the hamper or... You could do one or two and the ingredients to make them along with the recipe sheet. So do a few pieces of white chocolate fudge, then the ingredients and the recipe sheet to make it. Same with the stained glass, whatever, in a, in a mixing bowl. There's your hamper. Now, op shops are full of Pyrex, vintage Pyrex bowls at the moment. And they're just so gorgeous. We just had to stop buying them because they're so pretty. But a vintage Pyrex mixing bowl <laughs> means it can be heated over hot water to melt the chocolate, to make your fudge. There you go. Easy as. Um, we've done cleaning hampers. Um, craft in a jar or a basket or a bag. Um, we've sort of gone over that with the knitting ones. But... They don't have to cost a lot and hmm, actually don't have to cost you anything, especially if you live by the motto, she who dies with the most fabric or yarn or stamps or paper or whatever wins because then you're going to have a huge stash of craft supplies that you don't use and that you will probably never use. So go through them and make up 
the crafting basket or box or jar or whatever you have on hand as kits to give as gifts. Now you can do um, card making. So a packet of cards and envelopes, blank cards and envelopes from Kmart, $3. Yes. yes. $3 for $25. That's not bad. Um, then if you've got paper, put in some paper. If you've got stamps, you put in some stamps. Um, Kmart sell this amazing double-sided tape. Oh, my goodness. The best double-sided tape in the world. $1.50 for two rolls. Is that right? Yes. Two rolls for $1.50. It is brilliant. Best stuff ever. And we've tried a few in our time. This one is great from Kmart. And you find that in the stationery, stationery department, not in the craft department. Uh, might be cross stitch, there might be cross stitches, or you might be cross stitches to make up some cross stitch kits. Um, if you're an artist, look for paper, some pencils, some um, charcoal, chalk, all those sorts of things, and put them in um, in the kit. There's lots of things that you can do to um, create a budget gift hamper that looks amazing and doesn't cost a lot. Right. So, do we have some questions? Are you going to explain this? Oh, okay. So, here's a budget hamper that doesn't cost a lot. It costs nine dollars. Nine dollars. Nine dollars to make this, and this is a movie hamper. So, we've got microwave popcorn, packet of butterscotch, some Malteser share pack. Packet of party mix, more, more butter, um, microwave popcorn, um, more, party more party mix, a bottle of lemonade coming up. Oh, there we go. And two cute little popcorn boxes that we got at Blue Cheek yeah. Shop came out. There you go. Nine dollars in a recycled box that I had something came for me in. I can't remember what flowers or something within this for me. Oh, really? And um, yeah, and we've recycled it. Wrap it in cellophane. That's a really nice present, folks. I can say that I would be happy with the party mix, the lemonade, the Maltesers, the butterscotch, and popcorn. So thank you, darling. Now I know what I'm going to do this weekend. Not share that. <laughs> that's right, I'm not sharing. So that's a hamper that you can do. It's a really simple way to do it a movie hamper. If you were going to do it for a family, you might like to keep an eye out for a couple of DVDs and put DVDs in. Mm -hmm. You could do one kid's DVD and one grown-up's DVD. Christmas movies. Christmas movies. There you go, yes. You see the movie? Yeah. So there you go. And that was $9. That's not bad. And it's fun. Right. Now, do we have some questions? I'm going to have a drink of water because I'm a bit dry. Sorry. Um, Esther would like a quick reminder on how you sterilise jars in the oven. Oh, Estelle, okay. Turn your oven to 120 degrees. That's 120 degrees Celsius. Wash your jars and lids in hot soapy water. Rinse them. Dry them. And then I, this is just me, I have an old tea towel that I fold in half and put on the um, baking sheet, stand my jars on, on that, and then I put them in the oven. Now, they need to stay in the oven for a minimum of 15 minutes, but I usually put them in before I start doing the jams or the pickles or whatever, and I just leave them in there until I'm ready to fill them. But at least 15 minutes at 120. And I say 120 because, especially if you have an electric oven, you know, it'll reach temperature, it goes off, it drops down a bit, it comes back up again when it turns itself on to reach temperature. So it's not a steady 100 or 120 for the whole time. And that's what you want. You want that steady temperature to actually really sterilize. So do that. Um, the the lids, if the lids have the rubber ring on the inside of them, do not put them in the oven. It will melt. 
everywhere and make a mess. Don't put those lids in the oven. Instead, um, boil some, boil the kettle, fill a dish with the boiling water and let them sit in the boiling water. If you wash them with hot soapy water, rinse them in hot water, let them sit in the boiling water, they will be fine. It's really easy to do. It's not difficult at all. Um, if you go over to the website and type in how to sterilise jars, it should come up for you. It's not a question, but I liked it. The Linky family does hampers for kids and she does cubby house kits. Um, so she buys a few large sheets from the op shop and some spring-loaded plants from the hardware or cheap shops. Cool. I love that idea. That's really cute. I want to be a kid and get a present from you. <laughs> She's still searching. Okay. Michelle Hunter, can you tell us where you go op shopping? Our op shops are so expensive here. She lives in the country where the prices are over the top. $3 plus for a jar of buttons. But that's just the beginning. It depends how big the jar of buttons is, I suppose. Because buttons are, to buy new are really, really expensive. Okay, I have a particular op shop that I absolutely like. There's two that I really like. One I used to visit all the time because I was going past all the time. Now I'm not so much. I have to specifically go there. The other one's a local Vinnie's op shop. But we also have, in the last 12 months, had a... Salvo's and a Brotherhood of St. Lawrence open really, really close to us. And we've picked up some really good things from them, probably because they're new and not as well known. I agree op shops are not cheap, but a little secret, your Salvo's isn't necessarily a Salvo's. Some Salvo's op shops are actually franchises, which means that they are they are run to be profitable for whoever holds the franchise. So prices at those op shops, those Salvo stores, are very expensive. If you can find an actual Salvation Army run op shop, the prices are much more reasonable. I only found that out because I asked the question. I asked why one particular store was so expensive compared to another one that was only you know, a few minutes away. That's why the expensive one is actually a franchise that's run as a business by a franchisee who wants to make a profit. Now, I don't think all country op shops are expensive. I love um, going into country op shops. Wayne and I spent the weekend in Warrigal a while back. It is a while back now because we've had lockdown. We haven't been able to go in here. And I found a little op shop hidden away in the back street. It was amazing. I had so much fun in there and the ladies were lovely. And I said to Wayne, oh, there's an op shop. I'll just zip in and have a quick look. And an hour and a half later, he's still standing by the door. Waiting, waiting, waiting. It was so much fun. And then um, we were on our way back from Warrnambool, again, a while ago now, and we stopped off, and I can't remember the name of the place we stopped off, and same deal, I went, oh, it's all little. And it was the tiniest little shop, very narrow but long. And it was, so, we got, I got him a leather belt there, beautiful leather belt for $1.50, I picked up a crystal cake plate, not cut glass, crystal cake plate for $3. Um, what else did I find? Oh, I got um, some shirts for me that were about $1.50 each. It, it was really good. And then we were in one in uh, Casterton, still heading west in Casterton, I think it was, and it was it was amazing too. So I don't think all country op shops are necessarily expensive, but op shops as a whole, prices are going up because I think people are becoming, well, it's trendy now to, um, it's trendy to op shop, apart from the fact that it's, it's good common sense, it's trendy to op shop and look for 
what you need or genuine vintage things because that's the style that people are liking and are going for. Hannah and I were talking about it today and I mentioned something um, that we're doing as a new kitchen. I said, oh, I'm so glad we decided to do that or leave it because it's, it was on the block and everyone's raving about it. And she goes, oh, my house is coming back into fashion. <laughs> Don't think it ever will completely come back into fashion, but some bits will. So I was quite pleased. So, yeah, I think op shops as a whole are, are finding prices are going up. Now, there could be a few things. I said it's because it's trendy to shop there, but also because people are dumping rubbish, just dump. They're not donating good stuff anymore. You know, the, more than half of what they get is rubbish that they have to pay to get rid of. So if they've got to fork out money, then they need to cover that cost. And unfortunately, you know, little op shops like the Lions Club, the Lions Den one, um, they have really good stuff, but... And they do really good work within their communities. So they can't afford to be paying huge tick fees or rubbish removal fees. So if we're going to donate, we need to really be careful and make sure that what we're donating is worth. If you wouldn't buy it from an op shop, don't donate it. If you look at it and think, oh, it's just garbage, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay for that, don't, don't donate it. Give it to someone else or... But don't donate it to an op shop because they have to pay and we're putting a bill for it. Yeah. Um, Jess would like to know, how would you do a hamper for someone who lives, not for someone who loves chocolate but lives interstate? Oh, okay. Well, I used to send um, chocolate overseas, so it's, it's easy enough to do. You'll have to work out how you're going to get it to them first because your delivery costs will be huge then you can choose whatever chocolates you're going to do. within. Now, um, Australia Post has a thing now, if it fits, it goes, or if it fits, it posts or something, and their bags and prepaid bags and satchels and boxes, you know, are particular sizes and a particular price, and if whatever fits in it, regardless of the weight, it is sent. So that's an option for you. Couriers um, are, are often cheaper than Australia Post and right now they're a little more reliable than Auspost. Um, mm -hmm. So things like Star, Star, Trek. Star Trek and um, Couriers Plus. Um, they've been bought out by someone else. So if you type in Couriers Plus, it'll come up, but it comes up under and then it says it's a new company. Um, those sorts of things, check the prices of those too because your, your delivery will be the big, the big thing for that. If it's not such a, a worry for you, buy a prepaid satchel, decide, you know, what, how much you're going to roughly, the satchels are different sizes. Of course, the small ones are about, dollars big ones are about twenty dollars there's a medium sized one that's fourteen fifteen dollars or something um, and then decide what you're going to put in it now you can either um, get a flattish sort of box um, a bit like a meat tray you know, that sort of flattish sort of meat tray type thing and lay your chocolate blocks and chocolate bars and bags and things on it, wrap it in cellophane and then if you're going to post it, bubble wrap it. Bubble wrap it really well, probably two or three layers just so it doesn't get smashed, crushed or put it into a box so that it doesn't get crushed and do it that way. Um, Outback 6 would like to know how do you tell... How did you tell it was crystal and not cut, cut glass? Okay. The tea. Crystal, when you flick it, will sing to you. Cut glass goes clunk. Also, cut glass. So I don't, um, I have quite a bit of cut glass up there. 
Um, cut glass is generally slightly, um, I was going to say green. It's not really green, but when you look at crystal, crystal is clear and has a sparkle to it. Cut glass has a dull sparkle and can, if you look at it in the right direction, you sort of get that hint of green or yellow from the way the light reflects off it. And, yeah, it, it just goes, when you flick it with your finger, it will go clunk where crystal, yeah, that, wow. that's, a, that's glass. Crystal actually goes, gives you that ping, that sing to it. Yeah. Um, Bob would like to know, is it okay to give a secret Santa gift that's under budget but looks like more? Of course it is. Oh, Bob, of course it is. Now, with your gifts, any gifts, not just Christmas, it can be birthday, wedding, anniversary, whatever, if you've got your gift budget. But if you find the perfect gift, and it's under budget, that gift is done. So if you've got your $10, for, for instance, your gift budget is $10, you find the perfect gift and it is only $7.50, that gift is done and you've got $2.50 to move into your slush fund, your emergency fund, to pay off a bill, to add to savings or something. You do not need to go and spend that $2.50 to make to spend the $10. Just because your budget is $10, if you find something that's perfect on your budget, it's done. Just the same as if you find your budget's $10 and you find the perfect gift on half price, it's a $10 gift. Just because you pay $5 for it doesn't mean it's not worth the $10. So you don't need to spend that extra. You don't, it's done. So no. If it's under, it comes in under budget and you're happy with it, that's all that matters. That's all the questions. questions. Okie dokie. Well, guys, um, oh, good news, good news, oh, good news. Before we go, I heard from the printer um, over the weekend and the 2021 planners will be ready this week. This week, folks, this week is coming in early. No, he hasn't given me a day yet, but this week. So you know what that means. That means we will be working like crazy over the weekend to get them ready to send out. So very excited about that. We still have some left. They're on sale right now. There's not that many left. Once they're sold, that's it. We aren't doing a reprint this year. It's too close to the end of the year. And with the COVID and stuff, it's been too difficult. So we've been able to keep the price down. Well, it's actually gone up five cents to $30. And But we've added some things to this year's planner to make it more useful, to make it more fun. Um, we've kept the spiral binding with the spring back action so that it opens flat but it also means if you've got it in your bag and your binding gets squished it won't break it pops back for you so we're very excited about that although Hannah's not too keen on all the envelope looking she'll be doing but anyway look I've put a link to the order form below and if you haven't got one yet and you want one once they're gone they're gone so and there'll be no reprints so that was I was very excited to, to hear from Simon, our, our lovely printer, to know that they will be ready this week. Come in under time. So next week I'm going to be talking about specific types of hampers, what to put in them, how to pack them, how to keep them under budget. Now it's November and Melbourne Cup is over. It doesn't feel like Cup Day. It's feel a bit weird, but Melbourne Cup's over. To me, that signals it's full steam ahead to Christmas. I sort of figure that, you know, for us Australians, especially if you're Victorian or Melbourneian, once Melbourne Cup's over, there's nothing else till Christmas. We've got six and a half weeks. That's it. So I know this year's really flown by with all the craziness, but it's not too early to get started if you haven't. Do it now. Start thinking about your planners. Have a great week, everyone, and I'll see you next Tuesday with a bunch of stuff. 
we'll have to figure out where we're going to do the show next week because we'll have a bunch of stuff to show you. Um, thank you for joining us again. And if you've enjoyed the show, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do. Click the hit, just all you have to do is click the subscribe button and then the little bell next to it if you'd like to be notified when we have a video up. I posted a couple of um, random videos over the last couple of weeks. So you never know what's going to pop up. Thank you for joining us. And I shall see you all again next week. Bye.